again. Uh, I believe that's since the 70s, it's like the 70s. Oh, the Feast of Lights. God gave these oracles to the Jews in order to speak about something about their, their Messiah. How their Messiah would arrive on these uh, feast days, these festivals, and actually fulfill them. And if you read the New Testament, he, uh, he Yeshua, actually began his ministry on Yom Kippur, a Jewish festival. You read about the fact that he died on the Feast of Passover and arose again on the Feast of First Fruits. You read about that he was six months younger than John the Baptist. And we read that the two main Jewish festivals are six months apart. The Feast of Passover and the Feast of Booths. Um, and the autumn time. And here we are in the winter. And we read about John chapter 10 in the Bible. And Jesus showing up at the Feast of Dedication in the winter. The Gospel of John chapter 10 verses 22-23. I believe he talks about it. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, showing up um, at the temple and telling the Pharisees, I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. You know, my sheep know my voice. So there's a... You're, you're not a shepherd. You're a lost sheep just like myself. The Bible, honestly, is that your name, John Chapel? <laughs> there you go. There you go, that's the Holy Spirit speaking. Tonight, man. God knows your name. God created us in his image. Male and female, he created them. Every time I switch on daytime TV, I see that little rascal, Philip Schofield, trying to say that uh, we shouldn't refer to ourselves as male or female. When I look at that guy, I wonder what goes through his head. Daytime television. Anyhow, let's get back to something good, something worth hearing about. In the book of Isaiah, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray, each to his own way. You know, in the Isaiah chapter 53, we hear about the Messiah's first coming. He comes as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He's given over to the hands of sinners. He becomes the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And he fulfilled that feast of Passover. And uh, the autumn festivals, he will fulfill them at his second coming. Praise God. When he sets up his kingdom, Jesus was born during the festival of Booths. And God will set up his kingdom during the festival of Booths. Jesus opened his ministry on Yom Kippur, which means the day of atonement. Jesus' blood atoned for our sin. It's also the time that the Good Shepherd cast Satan and the fallen angels into the lake of fire. So you can all look forward to that if you're a believer. The battle's been won. God knows the end from the beginning. This life is a bit of a test to see if we're going to keep faith in God or we're going to hate God. We're going to blame God for everything. Um, we got free will. We can choose to follow God, to choose to allow God to forgive our sin. Supply a lamb for our sin, accept him into our life, become born again as Jesus says. A man must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. That was Adam's choice. It's Adam's choice to sin. But it's not fair that we all should just go to hell because of Adam's choice. So God has given us all a choice. Whether we stay within Adam's sin, the curses of Adam, 
The cost of Adam was that he was to toil the earth with his sweat and eat the bread of his toil. That was Adam's curse. See various uh, like communism have tried to eliminate that curse by producing uh, an elitist society and farmers. They tried to eliminate that curse, and yet communism, socialism has never worked. It's always caused mass deaths and destruction in the world. World wars, famines, plagues, and so on and so on. Even though there's faults within capitalism, it still allows people to go ahead and get on with their lives and have a plan for their life. To plan for your life. But God has a plan for you. To prosper you and not to harm you. Hallelujah. If you ever read the Communist Manifesto, it talks about Satan dethroning God. If you ever read the Communist Manifesto, Satan dethroning God in his heaven. If you read Psalm 1, it says, The kings of the earth plot against God and his Messiah, but he laughs. He laughs at them. So whenever men plot against God, against Christianity, God finds it really funny. But they do it anyway. <laughs> Satan seems to think he can get some type of victory over God. Satan seems to think that he had a victory over God. When Jesus died on the cross, he actually thought he'd won. He defeated God. He killed the Son of God. Little did he know. That Jesus was going to rise from the dead three days later and claim the victory. He didn't understand that, that blood that Jesus shed actually atones for yours and my sin. It wasn't clear to see in what Jesus was doing. Hallelujah. But that's what happened. That's what happened. And Jesus says. The prince of this world has been cast out. He's lost his power. He's lost his place. Only through your sinful flesh can you empower Satan. He's no power over a child of God. He's no power over God himself. So if you have faith in God, keep, keep hold of the, the truth, the good news of Jesus Christ. Keep hold of a King James Bible. I use a KJ3 or an easy read version. So many things happening in this earth that I'd love to tell you about, I'd love to share about the Mandela effect. So many. Have you heard of the Mandela effect, John? No. I, I don't think you heard. But anyhow. In CERN in Switzerland, they created this machine about over uh, 40 years ago. You'll probably think I'm totally crazy if I, if I went into it all. Well, let's ask you a few questions. Uh, but I'm not really good down that or I feel as if I shouldn't really speak about that just now. But I should focus on, on Jesus Christ, focus on the gospel. Because this is the Feast of Lights this week. It ends tomorrow. It's an eight day festival. As I, as I just said, these festivals were given to the Jews to speak something of their Messiah. Some Jews got it. Some Jews understood our Messiah is going to fulfill these festivals one day. He's going to become the Lamb of God. He's going to be the light of the world. He's going to be born. He's going to set up his kingdom in the Feast of Booths. God's going to pour out his Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. All that happened through Jesus Christ. Some Jews got it. Some Jews did it. Some Christians get it, Some, most Christians don't get it. Because they still follow the pagan festivals. Christ was never in the Mass. Santa is an anagram of Satan. Yes. <laughs> if, if you're a good boy or a good girl for a year and then Santa comes and gives you presents, where is that in the Bible? The Bible says, every good gift comes from the Father of Lights above. Very fitting for the Festival of Lights, I would say. The Bible describes heaven as being a place of light. There's no darkness in God. God is love, complete and utter love. 
And so if you're looking for acceptance in your life, come to God through Jesus Christ. If you're looking for an answer about what religion is, ask Jesus Christ to give you revelation and understanding about these things, and he will. He'll open up the heavens and pour his spirit upon you, as he did too many Bible believers before me. Daniel was given revelation. The prophets were given revelation about the Messiah of Israel. Hallelujah. It's not just a prophet, not just a good man. His Hebrew name is Yeshua, it means salvation. Yeshua, Hamashiach, it means salvation. The salvation of Yah, the Most High God. Yes, do you have a personal relationship with God? I certainly try and teach children the truth about the biblical festivals and the pagan ones. The history of Christ Mass, if you actually lived in Scotland or the UK over a hundred years ago, all the churches condemned these pagan festivals. Ishtar, Christ Mass, the church used to condemn these festivals. The Puritans absolutely condemned them. And now what we have today is a bunch of people without understanding, thinking they're honouring God by dressing up as an old man with a beard and a pot belly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> dressed in red with reindeer and all that stuff. No, these are, these are pagan festivals. Pagan festivals. Anyhow, I just pray for your soul. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? How do you know about Jesus? Do you know him personally as your Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. Right, so we're in the centre of Glasgow. Um, we've been out preaching. And I just want to say a few things about this time of year. Um, which is called Christmas, but I just think that there's nothing in the Bible that says the word Christmas. We're back at HQ and we're just discussing about how Jesus fulfilled the Feast of Lights, which is a Jewish festival. You know, as the Apostle Paul said, the feasts were given to the Jews to speak to them about the Messiah and to speak to the whole world about how the Messiah would come and fulfill these festivals in John 10. Jesus says, I am the, the light of the world. Um, I am the good shepherd, as we just heard. But uh, we've seen some other things as well, you know, people with lightsabers. I saw someone who was, um, had just seen that new Star Wars movie. I believe it's all Antichrist spirit. Um, what, what do you think of the Roman festivals there? I mean, do you think that they are, it pleases God in any way, or you, or you can you can somehow tell people about the true Messiah through these festivals, or, or what else, what is it speaking to you about, would you say? Uh, speaking to me about spending money, not drunkenness, drunkenness, um, Eating food, but it's mm. not, I don't think it's speaking about Jesus and what he came for. How does Santa tell us about Jesus? How does the reindeer tell us, you know what I mean, uh, wearing Santa hats? How does that speak to us about, about the true Messiah? You know what I mean? It doesn't. It's, I think it's, it's just like a tradition that people celebrate every year just because it's called Christmas and everybody does it and that's why they do it they just do it as like a, a thing that's going along with the sheep it's not actually no one has any knowledge about it and i don't believe it's about jesus coming to the earth being on the earth to, to save man the son of man came to save that which was lost and that's what jesus came to do he didn't come to see, uh, celebrate with drunkenness, getting drunk, damaging your body. He said, um, 
He came to save that which was lost. He came to save us. Man came to save souls and give us eternal life through him. That's why God gave his son. And that's that's what we know. Stop and think, think about Christmas just for uh, some time. Give it, give it some thought. Think about it. Um, Christmas, what people do is they, they get drunk. Uh, there's drunkenness. The Bible speaks about um, drunkenness, that no drunkard will enter the kingdom of God. They can't get in. So why would God tell us to celebrate Christmas when it's full of drunkenness? It's about drunkenness, it's about drinking, and it's about people having doing, having sexual activity when they're not in a relationship just because they're drunk and they, 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 they give in to lust. It's not a relationship. The Bible speaks against that as well. Why would God say, think of all these points, just think about it. How could Christmas be right? It's, it's, oh, it's got all the things the Bible speaks against. It's got drunkenness, it's got lust. And so, why why would all these things be to do with God? Just think about it. You know, it's just about people getting into debt because they're, they're giving all their family Christmas presents. And God's word says, do not do not get into debt. Don't get into debt, oh, no man anything. So all these things all shows that it's not about God. It's not, it's not from God. It's not God's telebrate, telling us to celebrate that every year if you just see if you just look at it and study it you'll see that that is it's not as it's actually the bible is speaking against these things it's not in line with the bible and 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 uh, god cannot lie and santa claus is about a lie so think about all these things think about it and you'll see that um, it's not from God, it's not it's not what Jesus is about. The Bible doesn't even tell us to celebrate Christmas every year. So these things all say to me that Christmas is, is wrong, it's so wrong, um, and it's sin, and it actually is so serious that it says that no drunkard will enter the kingdom of heaven, that it says that no sexually immoral person will enter the kingdom of heaven. That's how serious it is. And the devil is deceiving people and, and, and saying that, it's just a time to meet up together and, and spend time together, but he's deceiving them because it's sin and it's keeping them out of heaven, and they're celebrating it, and 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 these sins are serious with God, and so if you really look at it, you'll find that it's, 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 it's not what God is telling us to do at all. He's not telling us to celebrate that, and that mm. it's actually sin. Thanks for that, Carl. Mr. Tutti, what do you think? Mr. Tutti? <laughs> what do you think, pal? So, Mr. Tootie agrees with us, and what else can you say, really? Now he's not hes not getting involved in drunkenness or sexual morality, sinning. No. And d as not far as I know, he's still a virgin, Mr. Tootie, but <laughs> don't know, he spent a bit of time in England, <laughs> so I'm not sure no, uh, what happened down there. Good boy. <laughs>